Hi, what new possibilities will you create? Today's guests will share their story and provide insight from my network to yours. Let's get to it. You can't go and do what you don't know exists as much as you can. Um, trying to expose yourself and other people. Uh, this summer, I, I, I am aware that many of the programs have become, have, have gone virtual. Um, so uh, we can get you additional information on. Please program, don't forget to like, uh, comment and subscribe. That makes sense for you. Hey, so, so, so I actually have a question for you though. Yes, sir. Ask the um, what are your thoughts on the renaissance of consciousness Ooh. as it relates to racism and inequality? Um, Cause you know, I feel like this whole, you know, like, it's great that like for the first time in forever, I feel like I feel seen as like a black person, right? Like you, you know, for for so many years we had to, um, and and this is why earlier I corrected myself when I say be tolerated. Like for so many years, I feel like we've had to accept only just being tolerated. Like you allow us to be here type of thing. Um, and I feel like the world has now woken up and have a, a greater level of consciousness and, and empathy as it relates to the black experience, if you will. So uh, what are your thoughts kind of mm. on it since you're in since, since you're in D and I now? I know and so folks don't even know it probably you know, so the timing of my and I've got all these papers I still wanna read. What have you informed about? What I need to decide about, right? And what I need to discuss about all it related to diversity. And it's been a journey, man, because um, my first day at work in this new role was actually Memorial Day. Okay. George Floyd. Yep, yep, yep. And so for me to, to process that uh, with a new job, uh, and given the job that I signed myself up for was heavy because it's like I had to go through different mixed emotions. And what I realized is there's a lot we got to do. Um, and as long as we lean in to what we can do in our respective area roles, if that's professional life, personal life, you name it, like us being on NAVA board, we have an opportunity, have a voice as far as NAVA and make sure we can influence um, the decisions that NAVA does as an organization to help us in the black community for as accountants. Mm -hmm. You know, we have similar roles within the company. So for me, is seeing that, hey, if there's an awakening, two things happen. And I'm glad Michelle was on here earlier, I hope she's still here. You know, because of COVID-19, um, we had to get through crisis management, right? A lot of companies didn't know, or didn't take it serious to, to have a crisis management place in, plan in place. And then now, like, oh, oh God, we can't think of an earthquake or some natural disaster. We didn't think a virus will shut us down, right? No one thought about that. Although history has shown this has happened before. But anyway, no one think about that, right? So now people realize, okay, it's serious, right? And so as a result, when the racial injustice stuff came to the forefront in George Floyd for eight minutes and 46 seconds, watching someone life be taken away senselessly, on the screen, they literally went into crisis mo management mode. That's what the companies did, all of them. Their response was very much like crisis management. Communication with really top leadership. But what, what it also did was the other part of COVID-19 was that people have been home for this period of time and are self-reflecting and they're and about what, what do you want to be in their life, what's open up for them, that part was happening. And then you added on this here at the same time. So we had this alignment to both crisis management being activated plus just people are just self-reflecting and can't can't ignore it so it's one thing to be walking around blind and not realize your privilege and not know what's happening it's different when you can't ignore it because you're home you know what's doing right in your freaking face yeah. right and so folks are saying oh shit, this is real and guess what guys it's not just black lives matter it's other issues that happen in the world mm -hmm. around religions muslims you name it we got some a lot of darkness that happens around different countries, right? Um, so for me, what I see is, and taking the, taking the, and taking sure we ask, is make sure the action, have the conversation, important. 
they know we're not here to educate people about what it is the black life experience. There's lots, lots of books out there. There's tons yeah. of videos we can make. We, we can refer to them. We we welcome our life shift. I want to make sure you're anti-racist. I love that messaging. That is super dope. That, that's new to me in my 44 years of life, right? The people talk about that at such at such a stage, um, but they lean it in. So for me, it's like as long as we lean in and take action then it won't become a, a period of time that was just an event and what i'm feeling is that as though we are because these types of ripples could have an adverse impact where we go go back 400 years or we have a propelling impact where we go accelerate forward and i feel we're in the acceleration forward which is great yeah that, i mean i definitely unequivocally think that we you know we're certainly in a point where it'll 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 progress forward and that's kind of the great thing about it i mean i you know it, we're we're in a very hyperbolic time right now in terms of like what's happening in the world right like you have the sensationalist news um who they're they're feasting on any little tidbit that they can find um but at its core you know this is the pain of a people for yeah. 400 years and i think that that's really really important that um, that the world take take pause um, yeah. to understand and empathize with you know the plight that African Americans have right like we can't hide wherever we go right like we can't um, you know we can and, and, and for most of our um, you know I would say in the in the contemporary uh, world or the contemporary years like the last three four five hundred years. Um, you know, we've had to assimilate so much. We've had to learn other people's languages. We've had to learn other people's cultures as we forgot our own, right? So there's a- A bit of religion too. Yeah. It, it's a very, very deeply rooted, systematic um, kind of root cause in terms of what's happening. Um, so I am happy that people are recognizing what's been going on for so long. I do struggle a little bit with um, uh, you know, I struggle with seeing or determining what is, what is, uh, what is authentic, I guess, right? Like, cause, because I feel like this is the topic du jour at the moment. Um, in the, in the political realm, there's a thing called the Overton window and the Overton window is effectively what are the political issues that are palpable at the moment, right? So like, and, you know, political issues sometimes are like not in vogue. Sometimes yeah. they are. What's happening with the black, with black and brown people and police brutality, the socioeconomic issues, the, you know, sy systematic ills that have manifested from slavery. Um, those are in vogue at the moment. So I struggle trying to parse out what are what are the truly authentic responses. Mm. Because a lot of companies are throwing dollars at it, right? Like that's a myopic view of it, in my opinion, right? You throw dollars at it, you do that for three, five years, whatever. Um, but and then in five years, nothing's really changed, right? Other than the fact that you've thrown some dollars at it. And granted, I'm sure that it'll recruit some some change some value um yeah. but not at the level that we need it to be for there to be fundamental change and that's what i think we're looking at we need fundamental change and, um, and, and, yeah i, I love what you said here here's a, here's a challenge too right we know you look at you look at the protests look at the events that happen today those events that happen today are the benefactor of what was done in the 60s Yep. And the reason I say that means that we won't see the uh, the impact that we're having right now. Our we hope your little man may see it, but reality is probably your little man's children mm -hmm. that will see it. And so what that gives me is motivation. Realize, hey, what I do today, the action I take today, is going to really help propel my next generations. Yep. And so I know it's fitting that we had the little one in the background because that's true. You said 
Cause we're this the fact that I've seen a protest across the world, London, Paris. You got Philly standing up. You got you know look at Seattle, man. She Seattle's going off, going off one. Seattle like Seattle like the Taz, the Seattle like Capitol Hill on. autonomous zone. Yeah, they like on some, some old type of different. By the way, guys, and very peaceful. I love what they're doing. Don't let the media fool you. But um, it's like. Yo, it's crazy, right? So that's all coming from the results of the hard work and the protests of the 60s. Yep. And so, so you figure another, I'm hoping that the conversation is different. So to your point, we're taking the stance today, bringing on an allyship more so. It was always there, anybody did too, but more on a global scale. That's so, the big difference. Go ahead. Yeah, so, so, it, so that was actually the next thing that I wanted to yeah, yeah, yes, touch on a little bit. So, the notion of being an ally, an allyship. Yeah. So, um, while so, it's one of those things that I have a personal dichotomy with. It. So mm -hmm. I appreciate the love and the fact that people are saying, no, we need to stand up and this is wrong and, you know, things of that nature. But I also, on another note, know that these people knew that this stuff was wrong before, right? You know, their moral compass didn't change overnight when George Floyd passed away. So it became real. So that goes back to my initial question about authenticity and authenticity and then sustained impact. So I think those are yeah. those are really, really important things that people need to think about um, as we traverse this new world that we're in and not allowing people to, you know, flagrantly throw dollars at it, right? Like how do we create, you know, systematic reform that is fundamental to the core? Yes. And that's when we get some potential change, right? Like it's not gonna change overnight, understood. And you know, it'll oftentimes likely be manifested in what happens with our kids and our kids' kids, et cetera. Um, but I think it's really, really important to hold people accountable. And I think that's something we can do from a NAVA perspective um, and other professional organizations that support the, the diversity and inclusion space as you know, yourself and I, as individuals that work in corporations, um, major corporations, two of the biggest corporations in the entire world, Microsoft, and what's what's it called again? The, the one that keeps your butt. What's the it called again? The, the company? company? The bigger one? Not by market capitalization, but that's another question. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> Um, the bigger one that yeah, the age so is stored. Going back to allyship, like I think that we we as individuals in corporations um, and wherever we work for the individuals that are on the call, we need to hold folks accountable. Um, yeah. And you know, in a in a very polite way, but make sure that it's just not pomp and circumstance. That like we're sure. just going to throw some dollars. We're going to invest in it. Oh yeah, we invested in the NAACP, you know, legal defense fund. That's great. Continue to do that. But then also give people in your organization, in your firms, in your companies, an opportunity to grow and progress so that they then can be in positions of power, so that they can make decisions, um, so that they can represent your customers, right? And that's why like diversity supplier is a very major initiative for Microsoft, for Amazon, for a lot oh, of major yeah, companies. For sure. So that you reflect your customer base, your suppliers, et cetera. Um, so, you know that you know I I I, I say all that to say I just I just think accountability is really really important. It's really yeah. easy for folks for this to be the topic du jour at the moment. Um, again, the Overton window has uh, uh, you know it's it's expanded. Like you know, Black Lives Matter is uh, it is in style. It is it is it is du jour, and I appreciate the fact that there is a, there is there is greater awareness yeah. of it. But yeah. let's not allow it to, you know, to have been here in vain, right? Yeah. Like that, that, that greater awareness. And I think part of that goes back to mobilization and making sure that we have leadership. We have people who are um, helping to steer people in, in, in the right direction. And I, I just feel like right now, I have a lot of people ask me, well, what can I do? 
And it's like, it's a very like nebulous kind of um, question. Yeah. Because like, there, there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, and what I've like, so I, I've actually gotten that question uh, within Microsoft and kind of on my team. And it's Dude, like, probably, every, every day, probably 14 people ask me, what can yeah. I do? And hey, are you okay? Are you safe? Yeah, well, hey, we're we're definitely safe. Like, you know, you from Philly, me from Baltimore. We're, this is like, we're, <laughs> we're, we're very safe in Seattle. You know, you know uh, like, so. I'm like, hey, I'm like, uh, I'm from Philly, Seattle. It's like, this is like beyond suburbs. This is like yeah. the suburbs of suburbs. <laughs> exactly. We're, you know, we're on vacation out here. Um, <laughs> one, one, one thing you mentioned too is so to, to your point is how it's two pieces, right? It's the folks understanding a couple of things. So you think about possibilities, right? Time as this show and or the conversation I should say is folks will have blind spots and so we know what we know we even know what we don't know right and I know I want to be an astronaut I know shoot I gotta go to school and learn all these things to become astronauts so I know that I know I don't know I'm not gonna be an astronaut unless I go get trained up so I know that the biggest challenge we have as humans is we don't know what we don't know is not blind spot and even sometimes it's so obvious to everyone that's around you that can see you and know you, you don't see it. And we we operate a life that way, human. And so for a lot of people that haven't had to think about this area, truly are blind to it. Mm -hmm. And because in the way the system works, it was designed to be that way. So people that are privileged only know of their privilege because all they see and the experience is, is as such. So what happens, their way of life and reality is as such. So when they hear these blips of moments of out, what, what do you mean you can't go to the store and, and not and grab something and, and not be and be harassed? What do you mean? I've never been harassed by a cop. They, they can't even fathom the door in their mind. Well, you must have been guilty because if you did something bad, you must be wrong, right? Mm -hmm. And so people realizing, whoa, no, that's not the case. So now when that ripple happens, now you can't say you don't know. Now you do know, now you're conscious of it. Then the consciousness shifts. What new possibilities we create as a result of now understanding what I can do? That's how hopeful for is people can see, okay, what can I do today, right now, that will shift the narrative immediately? Because I don't give a crap about 400 in the past in the past. It's in the past. Yeah. What I need to do today this is the narrative. So I would say two things there. So I actually, I personally refute the fact that they, that some people didn't know, right? And reason, the reason that I say that, there's, you know, there's a really simple test that if you would provide it to people in the past that if you were to ask them like, hey, if you would, you know, trade places with a black person, wouldn't you? You know, if you had the opportunity Hell no. to. Most people would say unequivocally no. Correct. And the reason that they would say no, there it, it's deeply rooted, right? They understand right. that there's Fair systemic first. racism. Yep. Like right. there is, there is, you know, uh, you know, there is an assault on you and your body. Like looking at uh, the book that Tunisia Coates wrote, "Between the World and Me," right? Like yeah. police reform and things like there. So there, there, there are all these things. So I would contend that you're right. They do know. They just choose not to you know to consciously recognize yeah. it. so yeah so so i would say that first but then yeah. you know getting past that that you know that you actually do know um and uh you want to make change which is what i'm all about right like i'm not about the past you know what 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 i said to individuals that were on my um that that on my team at microsoft they were like hey what can i do you can only do as much as you can as an as an individual, right? And like, so I, I start that with this cultural revolution is not to um, push white guilt, if you will. Like, I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. I don't want you to feel bad. I want you to be empathetic. I want you to understand because. Black, like black people have, like we've been very tolerant of 
of again society and how we are treated and how we are again i hate to say it but tolerate um so you know but what you can do as a you know not a person of color or a person that's an ally or wants to wants to be a supporter whatever your kind of race gender um creed is etc um i think that you can start by the individual conversations that you have with other people like and you know and like if you hear somebody saying something that's like yo that's that's racist bro like why like why like i i, I don't agree with that like checking the people that are in your immediate sphere um again there's a halo effect that happens with that there's a ripple effect right if you check that person he you know he or she says he she or they i have to be careful with my pronouns yeah the day and age he she or they may say yo um you know what that's a good point that was races are pretty stupid what i just said um yeah, yeah. so you know now that person can check somebody else and there's a ripple effect there's a halo effect um and you know so i feel like there's a lot of personal responsibility that you can you can start doling it out today like you don't need to read a book you don't need to do anything you can say i know that wasn't right and i'm just going to tell a person like i'm going to check them and say you know what we call money we're going to g check the person like <laughs> look that's like that's not appropriate we're not going to do that yeah. um so I, oh. I think you can do small things like that you can also support black businesses you can um you can give a person the benefit of the doubt um if they're you know if you're looking at a resume and their name has a name that is clearly you know authentically you know black if you will right like it's like yeah. there's, there's there's certainly data that shows that a person like a resume that has you know john or even you know ryan for instance like like versus um I'm making up a name, Kwame or whatever yeah, yeah. else. Something that sounds, you know, you know, authentically or culturally um polarizing, if you will. Um, that like you can say, you know what, I wanna I wanna look at both Ryan and Kwame's qualifications. Kwame actually could be killing it, but like a lot of people don't give that person the benefit of the doubt because they said, Hey, you know what, I'm pretty sure he's black and like, but you don't know what that person yeah. can do. That person can have great aptitude, gr a great background, you know, a great worker. Um, so there's a ton of things that I feel Correct. like individuals can do today um, that doesn't require them to do like any additional work. They can yeah. just start doing, they can start yeah. doing right. Yeah, I mean, and just to, to your point, you're right. Just to clarify, too. You're right. It's not like they, of course, they know the privilege, right? It is is the layer layers of, of, of the degree. So, for example, I got an example where I was had a discussion with middle school kids. I'm talking about diversity, right? And I'm talking about uh, visible diverse, diversity versus non visible, right? And so I had kids sharing what they saw. So use me as an example. What do you guys see? Right? He said, oh, you're a man. Okay. You're older. The guy said older, not old. So I appreciate them saying that. All right? You're older. Uh, you, I you would go said, older. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked him, say, hey, I said, what's the one obvious thing that you guys see? It's obvious from visual, visible diversity. Quiet. Quiet. Then finally, a little kid said, um, um, African American. I said yes, and the, other girl, the teacher said, "Wow, I see you. Thank you for doing. I know it was hard for you to say that." And so that just tells you how rooted back. And this is 2020. Mm -hmm. So I had that moment of saying, "You can say I'm black. I'm African American. I love. I should love being chocolate. I love yeah. to the fullest." But it shows you how much is rooted back that at that age so we look at the adult version of the same people that same middle school kid is now our you know is a now executive in our companies they're still that same kid they haven't changed man it is still the same person 
So I mean, it's in a blind spot. It's so packed away from their child development to not have the conversation. That's how systematic it is. Mm -hmm. And so now we're forcing that kid to come to the surface. You, I can see in the conversation. I can, I'm literally talking to the eight-year-old. I can see it. Like you may be 40 now. You're, I am talking to the eight-year-old version of you because I'm unlocking that version as when you shut it down. You don't even realize you shut it down. That's the possibility we're creating because folks are like, oh shit. Yeah, you can say black. I say, wait a second. No hesitation. And so that's the part I'm talking about that we're unlocking right now. And it's a journey. I need to bring y'all on the journey, see the beauty and the value and the purpose of what we bring that we already know. We already know. And that's a whole other layer too. We, some of us know we also got to do our own healing. But what I mean is that's the journey we got to be on, man. Yep. I mean, that's one of the great, I, I think it'll be the great by, byproduct of this renaissance, this uh, civic, civil rights renaissance, if you will, um, is that, you know, young kids are inquisitive now. They're saying like, hey, what's going on now? Like, why are people protesting? What does Black Lives Matter, you know, Black Lives Matter mean? Um, so I think it's actually, it's almost a forcing function for parents mm. who may have glossed over the subject. And, and, and that's actually their, their blind spot by not teaching their kids. Like, look, there are all types of people. They have different skin, they have different backgrounds, different religion, mm. but they all matter, right? Their perspective yeah. matters. It helps us be smarter. It helps us to better understand the world the, the more that we bring everybody together. I mean, the whole notion of, you know, two minds is greater than one, but, you know, understanding just two people, five people, 10 people, 20 people, um, you know, being able to have those different perspectives, um, you know, certainly in mm. my opinion, uh, manifests greater wisdom. Um, yeah, man. And, like, and I think, you know, having people be almost forced now, if you will, to teach their kids um, you know, it's important. So what do allies need to do? So, you know, I think allies need to be open, like, and authentic. I think, you know, for some people, it, it's okay for them to be like, oh yeah, no, like, Black Lives Matter, that's what we want to do. But like, I want to know that you're authentic about it. Um, yeah. I want to know that you actually really, really care. And I know for some people, it's actually going to be a journey, right? Like, uh, you know, some folks grew up a certain way. And oh, I'm not yeah. asking them for them yeah. to change overnight the way that they grew up. That's just the way that they grew up, right? Like, I mean, everybody has had their own journey. Um, so, but I would just say, you know, I think it's important for them to be authentic, um, for for them to be empathetic, for them to listen first, um, and to, you know, ex to, to open themselves up to different exposure and better understand um, our cultures are you know the way that we show up like this whole notion of being authentically yourself and bringing your authentic self to work to me that's bs a lot of times right we still gotta assimilate a lot <laughs> whereas though the general population oftentimes doesn't um they can just show up like look this is who i am this is how i show up and you can like it or not i don't care like we show up like you know, uh, Theodore Huxtable type of thing, you know, like, hey, I you know, just want to make sure that, like, everybody's okay. <laughs> and I want to make sure that nobody's, uh, you know, not, you know, feeling uncomfortable and blah, 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 blah. Uh, so, you know, I, so I think that it, it'll take some time for us to continue to be our authentic selves and bring our authentic selves to work. And I think that we, this again this cultural revolution is creating the space for us to be able to do that um so i think that that's great um but again you know i think the allies need to be authentic they need to be accountable they need to listen um and they just need to be open and like have conversations understand where your you know your black and brown friends like understand their backgrounds like have open conversations I um, mean, I feel like, and I would also say to my black and brown brothers and sisters and they, um, is that, you know, we need to make sure that 
we're open enough to have the conversation. Like, yes. You know, don't have a preconceived notion about where yes, a person we came want to from. slice before we even hear their statement. We want to chop them up before you even make their comments. Yeah. A conversation requires two people. It, re it, re it requires multiple people to be able to have that conversation. So you too need to be open and be like, hey, that's how that person grew up. Let me help them better understand why the thought that they have is racist or it's not kosher or whatever it is like we need to be open ourselves um and no i think doubt. that we sometimes take the approach of, no this is this is how i feel and that's it like that's great that you have that passion and that zeal um but in order to make change other than you just fussing and arguing like with somebody who may not be listening and open to what you're saying um, it's going to require you to be open also. It's yep. not a one way street. Communication requires, it's, you know, it's not binary, right? Like it's not either or. Like it needs yep. two people conversing. Um, so. And that's why, to spot on, man, you got, you got to have that grace and give that space. Because what happens, white folks will tell you in a second that they've been shared told that if I say the wrong thing, I'm gonna get fired, I'm gonna get cut, I'm gonna be distance and that and that. And that's by design, by the way, by design, because the system is smart to say, if I stifle you for talking about it, then then it will, you won't break the code, right? Yep. And so in the reverse, if you are so militant about it, jump and react and not want to hear, you come with your own preconceived biases as well, then we are, we're adding to the fuel which is further hitting the conversation from happening. But both of us are impacted. We are scarred in pain. They are fear or whatever of losing what they got and the discussion not happen. Is and we see it in corporate America. Because most you see most cases is it has to be filtered first. Okay, it's going through PR, and they sure it's checked, they sure we you know nice pose. So that people are already nervous to have a conversation. I'm like, yo, this doesn't need PR. It just it's human to human. Like at the end of the day, if I cut you in half. You cut me in half. You look the same. It's been proven. Our organs are given to each other. And when we pass away, so there's this freaking no difference between us two. The only thing that's different between us two is our mental blocks will be learned by societal norms. And what we get what we agree to by consensus consensus is and do our legal contractual agreements to our laws and our systems that we follow. That's it. And people are fed up because we have a system that we don't be agreed to that's not protecting us. So like, well, why the hell am I following this agreement if you guys not hold to your part of the agreement? That's the real fight. That's the real challenge, right? And folks right. to say, and the agreement is broken, fix the damn agreement. Let's fix it. Let's challenge us. Let's see what we can fix. But follow it, damn it. And not have any loopholes where, oh, I'm above the law because I got this additional support. I can actually literally put my knee in the neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds and still say it wasn't due to the person didn't die through shortness and breath. Are you serious? That just shows the reinforcements of the systems that's around us. Yeah, that, that I mean, the like, problem. Honestly, Body like time. that that George Floyd situation, um, that showed how that gentleman valued Clearly. George Floyd's life, right? Like that, and it's cascaded nationwide and now worldwide because that became an indictment on the police and their value of black lives and black bodies and things of that nature um but then it's manifested also even further and permeated even further the the world now has to now think to themselves like hey how have i been engaging in the world and engaging with other people that don't look like me um, what have, what have I, you, you, people have now had to challenge their assumptions. Um, you know, and now that corporations are saying, you know, yo, Juneteenth is a holiday effectively. <laughs> like, um, and like, you know, it's, uh, it, it's had to respond. And to your point earlier about crisis management, like what's happening in our community could be existential to some of these corporations. Hell yeah. um, you know, right? So they had to respond from a crisis management perspective. Like they, Correct. you can't end up on the wrong side of history when it comes to this, because this can be an existential. So think about 
CrossFit right now. I'm not sure if you've seen the news about CrossFit, but the CrossFit CEO and owner has uh, said he's made some remarks that were just, uh, you know, uh, less than becoming of a CEO mm. of, a, of a major, you know, multinational company. And he's been ousted. Like, think about Papa John's, for instance. Yeah, uh, I remember that, yeah. Right, right. So these people, you know, to these people in, in their views, like, I mean, the, that old school of thinking can be existential to these corporations today. And especially given that, like, these the, the value of these companies are pretty much propped up on what's happening on the NASDAQ as, as well as the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah. And, and the fundamentals of that is based on consumer sentiment. How do yeah. people feel about your company? Correct. If people feel that your company sucks, like, it can drop in a heartbeat. Talk yep. to Boeing. Boeing had a $450 uh, per share um, per share price a year ago. Um, they went down to like 90 about two months ago. They're back up to like 180 right now, which I should have bought at 125. I was kind of pissed about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like these companies, like it, it, it is. Uh, so my professor, my investor professor, um, used to say, what did he say? Uh, uh, oh, so, so yeah, my, my investment professor at Yale used to say that like the stock market is based on animal spirits, right? It's very like, yeah, there's fundamentals, but it's really kind of how people feel. It's, it's like the sentiment. Um, so I say all that to say that like, it would behoove these corporations to be on the wrong side of history when it comes to racial inequity, and racial injustice, um, socioeconomic inequity, and things of that nature. So, um, I, you know, I, I say all that to say they too now need to push down initiatives within their corporations um, to have people get on board with the fact that we need to be more diverse. We need to have deeper perspectives. And we've been saying it for years, for years, it's been lip service in my opinion. Uh, but I think that, you know, going forward prospectively that they're actually going to have to live it. Uh, if you look at Reddit, yeah, um, Reddit is uh, the the, uh, the, the co-owner is married to Serena Williams. He actually gave up his board seat to say that, hey, I am recommending that a black or brown person replace me on the board of directors of Reddit um, as a way to, he's kind of boycotting what's happening. He said that he did it because like he has a mixed daughter now who, you know, if she asked in 15, 20 years now, like, Daddy, what did you do during the 2020 Renaissance? Um, and he can say, you know what, darling, I gave up my my board seat, uh, which is uh, which is a big deal, right, to have control. That's of money, board, yeah. right? He gave up his board seat to say, hey, I think that a black or brown person should sit on this board in lieu of me. Um, and I... And I I think that you need more people. And I, again, I'm not saying give people positions just because they're black or brown. Like, they need to be qualified, right? The the chairman of the board of Microsoft, a brother by the name of John Thompson, uh, who also happens to be Kaba Al Saab I'm from sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. I mean, that. you know, achievement just kind of runs in the blood, I guess. Um, <laughs> but... That you know, he's the chairman of the board of Microsoft, again, one of the largest companies in the world, right? Like, so he's qualified, he's been in that role for a number of years. Um, but we need to get people, and not only in board seats, but in you know, in the political realm, like, we need, um, you know, people who are, uh, you know, mayors and congress people and U.S. senators. Shout out to SB for Senate, uh, down in Mississippi. Um, you know, we need to make sure that we get people in these positions, in these seats, so they too can have a voice in the conversation and be able to hopefully change minds or at least provide a different perspective as rules and laws and things of that nature are promulgated that we all have to live by. All right, Alex, does being an ally mean considering your black place first to lead stretch projects? Uh, or purely off of performance? If they're qualified. I mean, I'm not saying, like, I believe in a meritocracy, right? Like, 
you know, if you're good and you're qualified to go and do the work, you should go and do the work. So those are the people who should go and do it. If your black employee is like, hey, I, you know, I need to have them work on a couple of things before I can get them to go and do that, work with them to be able to, so they can build up the skills so they can go and do that. Um, so, I, you know, I'm not a proponent of giving people stuff, right? Like you should earn it. Um, you should, you should have, you know, as a boss, you should have, you should give people the opportunities that you are comfortable with and that they'll go in representation of you. Um, so I think that that's really, really important. So I'm not a proponent of giving people stuff, but I think that sometimes, yeah, like sometimes you need to go out on a limb also. So yeah, you want to give people like the stuff that they can do. But sometimes if you know that like, hey, this will actually help this person grow. Yeah, give that person the opportunity because it'll push them, right? right. Like, I, like, you know, so I, I feel like you should also look at it from that perspective. So I gave a really like wishy-washy answer. I mean, because I no, think I'll it add depends. To it too. No, I'll add to it too. I think it's a comment I'm playing my power in. Um, I think it's... it's Two parts that too good. Also, is the sense of so inside call in the in the, in the space that we have in the corporate world is uh, is like, kind of like a mentorship, meaning that a sense of community that's looking out for talent, right? And so making sure you have those advocates in the room. In a lot of cases, that advocacy hasn't been there, right? And so from an ally. You see them rising stars in the organization and ourselves to see them rising stars stars in the organization, making sure that when you when those opportunities are being presented, you say, Hey, what about what about Ryan? And a lot of times that's all it takes to say the person's name. Because what happens that you don't say what about Ryan, you never hear about it. You see about internal transfer, a lot of roles are not even advertised, right? So don't get advertised yet. Is, is, is still being discussed as a potential. And I say, hey, what about Ryan? Oh, yeah, Ryan would be great for this role, right? So it's like you mentioned earlier, is being present in a conversation, not only calling out shit that's obvious and, you know, that's, you know, there's racism, you gotta be anti-racist, but also it's being proactive seeing you know this top talent that is, is, is a growing sport in the company and making sure you have that true advocacy in place and so the advocacy is what's missing often and making sure hey i had this opportunity here hey why not bring chelsea on board bring chelsea to this role here oh chelsea be great yeah i like her she's awesome okay let's do it right and they'll bring her and then chelsea come over but if i never said the word chelsea and it shouldn't have to only be us to say it that's the opportunity that's missed a lot in the, in the, in the organization and that's the shift that we need to see because that way do you want can if you want retention you want to retain top talent. You want to you want to grow people. That's how you do it. I got opportunity abroad. I got and now us as individuals, our responsibility is be very clear and intentional about what you desire. I mean, I started my campaign last year, probably a year ago. I said, Hey, you know what? I want to do greater. I want to get bigger and involved in diversity. I'm doing a lot of space already. Let's do more. And so I was very intentional talking to people. And what I was doing by being intentional was I was making sure, I did, I sit down on the panel and that good. But being intentional is you were holding them accountable as well. You can't say I didn't tell you so. Here's my interest, here's my passion, here's where I'm looking to go. If you hear of opportunities, think of me. So now I'm driving my advocacy and I'm taking ownership of my career. So both directions, being intentional by sharing where you want to go and own it and being comfortable in your own skin, right? And know your worth and bring that presence to the table. They will receive that same energy, knowing your worth and your energy and you hold them accountable to the advocacy. That's how we need to make it work both directions. Yeah, and, and you know, I think as a manager, it's also really, really important to understand a person's background and their perspective, their, their paradigm, right? Um, you know, I give the example when I started at Ernst & Young in uh, Baltimore, oh. straight out of undergrad, you know, I, I would say in my start class, I, I believe I was the only person that wasn't an intern with the firm. Um, and so when I started, 
I, I felt behind the curve, right? Like everybody, like my my peers knew how to work the the audit tools. They knew how, they knew the nomenclature. They knew how to you know how to do the things like that. I didn't know how to do. Um, but it, it didn't mean that I wasn't smart, that I couldn't figure out how to do the things, but I was certainly behind the curve, right? Yeah. So I feel like as a as a boss, um, as, uh, as, as a people manager, it is incumbent on you um, to meet a person where they are to help develop them, right? I think people managers are so worried about their own personal trajectory that they often tie behind um, the rest of the people on our team. And I feel like the data, you know, if we were to look at the true data, the data often supports the fact that the, the people that are oftentimes left behind are disproportionately black and brown. So um, I think that is really, really important to make sure that you invest in those people that like they have other skills, right? They have probably, you know, that black or brown person is probably much better equipped to deal with teams or with large mm -hmm. groups or to, you know, be diplomatic in whatever it needs to be done, right? Mm -hmm. um, versus, you know, John, who, you know, yeah, he could build a hell of a model, but he can't talk to anybody, um, you know? So you, you need to make sure that you invest in people where they are. So, and, and that doesn't mean that John isn't a great employee either, right? Like you help John and you support him um, to learn how to, you know, be, more social and be uh be a better communicator etc so i so i feel like it's really really important to help people on their journey and i and um you know something that i, I created when i was baltimore chapter um uh president of naba is i created a program called backpacks to briefcases mm -hmm. i will say that the the name is technically once i researched it it had been trademarked by some uh, a, a, a women's lawyer association in Chicago. So I use it in a colloquial uh, way, backpacks for <laughs> briefcases, but the intent was the fact that when I started at EY, I didn't know a lot of this stuff, right? So I wanted to help our NAVA students um, have a competitive, adva competitive advantage to better understand the business ecosystem. Like where does audit fit in? Like how does you know uh, you know capital planning fit in? How um, you know what are the different roles of the individuals within the organization? What are some of the you know accounts that you will likely have to manage or support as a first year staff? Cash yeah. accounts receivable, you know things of that nature, right? Like how do you you know so giving them a competitive advantage so that when they show up day one. They, they're, they're not completely like a deer in the headlights, right? Because our educational system, like, so me as an accounting student at Florida a and great institution, wouldn't, you know, say anything bad about it. However, my one auditing class did not prepare me to be an auditor. Correct, like, correct. Like, I took one class. Um, and so now I show up at EY, like, you're an auditor, you need to go and Make sure these financial statements are reasonable and that these shareholders are you know are in good hands with this company it's like yo i took one class <laughs> right like um so that's why it's important for us to give back our knowledge our you know our finances the power of the person things of that nature is really really important to invest back and that's why nava's model lifting as we climb is just so important so imperative to that, you know, no matter what field or industry you're in, it's important to give back and to help that next person. I personally think that I'm a martyr, like in my opinion, right? Like I feel like in my mind, I was supposed to be a billionaire, right? Like hopefully, <laughs> it'll, hopefully it'll still happen, right? We'll see. Um, you know, I, I'll put it out there for the seven people or nine people that are on here. <laughs> Um, in my mind, that's what I thought, right? Like, I mean, hopefully, you know, and, and again, like I've done okay. Um, you know, it, 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 it could have been a lot worse, but I feel like I have helped other people along the way, right? And if they become the next billionaire, I'm okay with that. 
That's dope. That's a good. Yo, that's a good. That's a good. I'm, we may lose. We may get shut down too. Yeah, we're probably about to get shut down again because it's like it's an hour at a time apparently. Yeah, so we we we, we may get shut down, but that's some good closing words, man. Because I I agree. I mean, yo, I mean, yeah, hey, okay, cancer still here. I love you, girl. I love it. I love it. No, yo, I bring me a cheesecake back from Philly, from South yeah. Street. I know. What's so, up, yo, man? Ryan, I want one from Jim, yo, man. with some whiz. Yeah, there's a whiz. Whiz, the whiz, whiz and some onions. <laughs> no, oh, what? Yeah, two minutes. Oh, perfect. Two minutes away, man. What you got? Two minutes left, man. What you want to drop? You just dropped the big dime right there, though. I mean, I mean, stay in school. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What's school? We all remote. Nah, nah. I appreciate you, man, doing this, man. This is this is good, man. We cover a lot. It is a lot. I've been a lot has been opened up for me for every session I've been having. Um and hopefully for folks to jump in as well. And we got a lot to do. So I see I see your point. I say let's lean in. Yes, so sir. We see its possibilities. Don't don't get overwhelmed about the the, the, the the deepness of all we gotta do. Just see what actions you can take from your lens and move forward. And yep. things will, will continue to open up for you as you do so just keep leaning in so i can get overwhelmed and feel frustrated and got, i got over 300 emails that's a real real truth by the way but i click each email and just tackle it don't worry about the 300 just tackle it the one you got at a time so same in life don't worry about the, how vast the thing may be in social injustice 400 plus years yes it's huge lean in to what you can do every day and make yep. a change period Yes, sir. Hello, this is Mr. Rose. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to come back every week for new podcast content. Special thanks to my daughter and her team and all their hard work putting this content together. Be engaged. Be aware. Be ready be heard. Thank you.